Okay, well, let's start with um, disunity on the left. And to what degree did it mean that you couldn't retain power? Well, I, I served as prime minister for three years. Maybe we will be back, maybe not. This is not my priority. My priority today is a great cultural fight against populism, against the refuse of dialogue. With campaigning at full tilt in dozens of countries, the populist right could become the second biggest bloc in the European Parliament. Second, that is, to the centre-right. So with the electoral ground shifting, what on earth happened to the left, to social democracy? Their hold on European national governments has slipped. We have the votes of the people, you've got the votes of nobody. And now they struggle for relevance across the continent. But the old left solutions aren't solutions, and people want change. So that's where social democracy has got to be. If it gets there, by the way, it'll revive itself completely. The Solverein complex in the Ruhr is a World Heritage Site, a testament to an industrial past, and indeed to a type of class-based politics that used to define elections across Europe. Deep mined coal, like the industrial proletariat, is all but vanished from this German heartland. With the closure of the industries came the dissolution of a wider political and social complex. Trade union branches, working men's clubs, brass bands, you name it. And the scattering of hundreds of thousands of voters in all directions, to the far left, to the Greens, but also, and most significantly, in a place like this, to the right. This is the last working pit in the area, but even this one's going by June. Guido Ryle has worked here for years, and his political journey began with the natural party of the working class, the Social Democrats. Also ich sag immer, ich habe die Sozialdemokratie so mit der Muttermilch aufgezogen. Also mein Vater war Sozialdemokrat, mein Opa, äh, niemand war irgendwas anderes wie Sozialdemokrat. Und wir haben uns immer gut aufgehoben gefühlt bei dieser Partei. As the other miners clock off, Guido seems to be on good terms with them, an easy camaraderie unaffected by his political shift from the Social Democrats to the Alternative für Deutschland, or AFD, with its bracing right-wing message. Also ich glaube, mein Vater und mein Großvater würden mich verstehen. Und ich sehe auch jetzt in den Reaktionen, die Arbeiter, die verstehen mich. Und die Arbeiter wählen heute die AfD. Die Arbeiterschaft, das ist die Basis der AfD. Denn es wird ja immer gesagt, alte, abgehängte Männer wählen die AfD. Also die AfD wählen tatsächlich überwiegend Männer, die sind aber zwischen 40 und 60 Jahre alt und die stehen im Leben. Die erwirtschaften den Wohlstand unseres Landes gerade. Das sind die Leistungsträger. The AFD is now making inroads in the Ruhr, but its real political heartland is across Germany in the former East. Central to the rise of the AFD is the collapse of the SPD, or Social Democratic Party, from 40% of the vote nationally in 1998 to 20% two years ago, and probably even less in the coming polls. We went to the Thuringian town of Gotha for the annual May Day celebration. Die Armut ist da zu Hause, wo der industrielle Kahlschlag gewütet hat. Even on this workers' holiday, support for the old left is very thin on the ground here. Es ist auch schwer in der Öffentlichkeit die SPD zu vertreten, aber ich stehe dazu. It's all the more poignant because Gotha was the place where social democracy was founded. Okay. Okay. This is the historic Saal. Mm -hmm. Here, vereinigte sich 1875 die SPD. What do you make of the state of the Social Democratic Party today? Oh, ich denke, die SPD hat noch viel zu arbeiten. 
Sie muss sich auf die Traditionen von 1875 wieder besinnen. Sie muss für die ärmeren Schichten da sein, aber auch für die Mittelschicht. From Gotha, the new party spread around Europe and the world. Labour and various socialist parties sharing a commitment to social justice within a capitalist system. But across the continent, they're in trouble electorally and will be, Denmark's former Social Democratic Prime Minister believes, until they have a convincing message on immigration and national security. If you're not a party that gives sufficient answers to this, um, to the new immigration issues, to all the discussions about uh, multiculturalism, you are going to lose out. The social democratic parties that have done well in solving those two things, they will continue to do well. So it's not only about the economy, it's also the parties that have understood that it's about culture uh, and nation uh, and community. <laughs> In northern Italy, right-wing populists of Matteo Renzi's Lega or League have made big electoral inroads. The university town of Pavia being an island of democratic party rule. But even here, Lega are expected to win in local elections. The centre-left split here, and their former leader believes disunity is a key part of the bigger story of decline. The real problem will be a stop with the division between uh, radical left and the centrist. Unfortunately, this division is everywhere. It's in the uh, UK, was in the UK between David and, and Miliband some years ago, but also now. Tony Blair is not Jeremy Corbyn. Is in France between Macron and Mélenchon. But I believe this will be the priority stop with the division. Last week, Lega leader Matteo Salvini came to Pavia as part of his European election campaign. Grazie, ragazzi. His speech was a blend of protectionism, a paean to the values of the nuclear family, and EU bashing. There was also another populist standard, a swipe at state TV. But Salvini is no outsider. He's a full partner in Italy's ruling coalition. As Interior Minister, he's acted to turn migrant ships away from Italian ports. And even those who've already made a life in Italy, George Cunang arrived legally from Cameroon 13 years ago, fear Salvini's changes could force them to leave. I'm a Salvini victim. <laughs> George just lost his job because a government grant to his employers was cut from 35 to 19 euros a day. He sees a bigger plan at work. I think that is a political move because as their political idea is to say that all the problem is Italy of Italy is the, the, about migrants. Now, if I didn't give them documents, I didn't give them any possibility to have a normal life, how are they going to do that? To stay in the street, to continue to, to, to do bad things, drugs, all these things. And now they, they will say, I told you that these people are not good people. See, what are they doing? Hey! <laughs> Hammering migrants is, of course, part of Salvini's message, and he delivers it tirelessly and telegenically. At the end of every rally, supporters queue for photos. Opponents lampoon him as Salvini, but they struggle to generate this enthusiasm. Bravo! Bravo! You want him to become the prime minister? That was, that was my dream. Will be my dream. <laughs> Berlin, meanwhile, they're also warming to the selfie theme at SPD party headquarters. It's a lot at stake. Um, we see right-wing populism rising in all over Europe. They don't want a Europe that stands together, that works together, that finds compromises. They want a Europe um, of nationalists. 
which would mean a completely different Europe. It would mean one country against the other and not all together. With its Swiss headquarters and hundreds of thousands of members still, the SPD hardly feels like a spent force. But it also feels like very much a part of the political establishment. And that's a problem. In trying to avoid the long downhill path to electoral oblivion, German Social Democrats are pinning their hopes on the leader of the party's youth wing, who advocates going back to basics. Der Schlüssel, um Wählerinnen und Wähler wieder zurückzugewinnen, ist das ursozialdemokratische Versprechen, dass es einen Staat gibt, der Schutz herstellt. Was wir aus Studien hier auch mittlerweile wissen, ist, dass der Aspekt, der das Wählerspektrum der AfD zusammenhält, ist eine schleichende Verunsicherung. Und was dagegen einfach nur hilft, sind ordentliche Staatseinnahmen über gerechte Steuern, ist ein regulierter Arbeitsmarkt mit Mindestlöhnen, mit Sozialstandards, ist eine funktionierende Rente, auf die man sich im Alter verlassen kann. Das sind erstmal die Basics, die eine linke Politik anbieten muss. But have the Social Democrats, by gaining big improvements in equality, simply outlived their role? And by running governments that embraced austerity, didn't they undermine their claim to being on the side of the downtrodden? Former leaders, judged harshly by today's left, argue the movement will wither if it continues to obsess about the past rather than addressing the future. It, it, it either looks as if it's supporting the status quo in an era that demands change, or it's defaulting to an old left set of positions that are kind of you know, positions of the 1960s and 1970s and just aren't relevant to the way the world's changing. And they've got to get out of that, that choice, which is a choice either of being guardians of the status quo, which is what social democrats should never be, or frankly, just sort of political refugees from the students' unions of, of the past. Although the centre-left is struggling in many countries where it once held power, there are places where it's mutated into something more electable. In France, President Macron's En Marche has gutted the Socialist Party and sells itself as a liberal movement. And in Denmark, Social Democrats have shifted right, including being ready to go into coalition with the populists. It makes it harder for them to just be protest parties uh, or to stand from the outside and shout. Uh, and what we need to, to do with these parties is to make them shout less and take more responsibility. So would Italy's last Social Democratic leader accept a coalition with Lega and its partners in the Five Star Party. Salvini achieved a result worse than my result in the last election. He went to the government because we refused to make an agreement with the Five Star Movement. But for me, it's impossible to stay with the people who stay within Nigel Farage in the European Parliament. <laughs> And it is in that European Assembly that Lega now hopes to bring together a coalition of the populist right. We would like to convince the other groups and uh, some of the other governments which are not supporting our policies that it's the last call. If they and us want to save the future of Europe, this is really the last call. Less Europe in order to save Europe. And that hints at the wider story in Europe, of a right-wing populism that campaigns energetically with a clear agenda. And in the vanished world of class politics and jobs for life, the left is trying to find answers to public uncertainty. Diese Begeisterung für die Idee ist nicht verflogen. Begeisterung für die Partei vielleicht schon, für die Idee nicht. Those who once led centre-left governments have no doubt about the scale of the task facing them. 
accepting that community means a lot to a lot of people, safety, security, and if the left stop talking about that, we're handing that agenda to, to the right-wing parties, and I don't think we should be doing that. And the problem with social democracy today is very simple. They've got to have a, a narrative about the future, because they will always win when people feel that the future is going to be more secure and more prosperous for them. The coming polls will test whether the centre-left has found that compelling vision or whether it's about to receive another damning signal from voters.